really what we're trying to find here are high markers. That's when you really see problems. And you could see for this little girl, this is, keep in mind, this is a three-year-old little girl. And the parent said that the girl is literally addicted to sugar and she refuses to eat anything else. And she has a ton of symptoms, skin, mood, gut, behavior, just all kinds of stuff. And look at this tartaric acid which is an indication of aspergillus growing in her gut. We want less than 3.9. She's 147. I think this is the highest I've ever seen. And sadly, it's in a child. And then, of course, arabinose. You and I have talked about that being the gas that candida produces. We want less than 56. She's off the charts at 226. So right That's there. That's really high. That's really high. This is the amazing thing. In five seconds of us looking at this page, we know this person's already colonized for mold, and they were in a moldy house in Texas, had major mold exposure. And we, now we know that she's got a major candida problem. So even if we just had that data and just pursued those two points, we would get a hell of a hell of a lot more results than what you would get if you went to the pediatrician and said, hey, I think she's got a problem. They're not going to know anything about these tests or these markers. Plus, in the conventional medical world, I mean, frankly, you know, candida doesn't really exist to people like that right? Conventional medical doctors, they're very rarely saying, hey, candida is a problem. Usually it's one of those things they just say, oh yeah, that's just kind of what natural medicine thinks everything is the problem is candida. Not necessarily, but if we have objective markers that show it, it's good to really know that. And um, conventional medicine isn't typically doing testing that's sensitive enough to really pick it up. Yeah. And, and I know you run a lot of the Genova panels. And the mm -hmm. reason that I use the Great Plains is just because I like to run the combo a lot when I, you know, I've right. kind of attracted a lot of moldy people. And so we like to run the mycotoxin combo test. So one cup yep. of pee, and we get two labs. So that's why I do the, the, the Great Plains. But the rest of page one was okay. She didn't show any major bacterial overgrowth. She was starting to creep up there on one of these markers, but overall, it was decent. So let's move on. Let's look at, so this is where all the fatigue is coming from. They said that this kid is just exhausted. And then they, they described it as poor tone where she literally just lays on the floor all the time. Justin, I don't know if you've ever even seen anything this high. I mean, look at these oxalates, 677 off the charts. We know candida is a piece of it, but man. And then look at the, uh, I, I call it succinic, but I think it's actually pronounced succinic. So cynic, yeah. And it, just so you know, oxalates a lot of times, especially in a kid, it's probably not like, I would never tell a mom like, oh my gosh, like most green vegetables have oxalates in it. So I wouldn't be telling any mom like, oh my gosh, you, you need to avoid green vegetables unless there was some kind of oxalate crystal issue in regards to kidney or significant muscle or joint issues. I would just think that, hey, those oxalates are probably high because of the candida. Candida can really increase oxalate production and decrease oxalate synthesis. So I would lean more on the candida uh, being the oxalate problem. What and I think? think this, and I think this is huge because you have some unnamed people writing books and fear mongering people about oxalates. And now you have people paranoid of vegetables. Like you just mentioned, you've got people that are like cutting vegetables out because they're worried about the oxalates, but you and I've seen personally and clinically hundreds and hundreds of point reductions in the oxalic acid just by treating the candida. So yeah, I would agree that, and when we know she's not eating vegetables, so we know that that's not where it's coming from. Yeah. And so we know if they have a candida issue and they have a whole bunch of sweet cravings, you know, exactly. They're not eating a whole bunch of vegetables. That's not the issue. They're eating a whole bunch of crap and we don't want to give them any more ammo to let their, <laughs> let their kiddo eat crap. Right. So we want to definitely get some good nutrition in there. More than likely, most of the oxalate issues are going to be from um, the candida. Now, again, some of the exceptions may be if we have vulvodynia, excessive joint pain from oxalate crystals, maybe kidney stones or some really kidney pain issues. It had to be something really clinically significant. Uh, if not, we're not going to worry about the oxalates. We're going to think of that more as an effect than a cause the cause really being candida and the effect being more of the oxalate as the cause. So I always, when I'm looking at these labs with patients, I always have them in their head, draw a line, one size cause, one size effect. Effects we watch and monitor, causes we, we treat and work on supporting. And so it's easy for people to look at an effect, think that is the cause and treat the effect. And then a lot of times the result won't be as good or you do things that aren't necessary, like cut out foods that may be really healthy for your kid. Totally.